so I'm Richard. I'm the Chief Commercial Officer for a, a learning business called uh, Avado Learning, which I'll, I'll tell you a bit more about in a second. So um, my backstory is I um, grew up in a little village uh, in Staffordshire as part of a small family um, and probably would be described as a low-income or a below-income family where um, nobody in that family had done any formal education uh, from... Um, the age of 16, 17, 18, whenever being a school leaver was. So um, by a bit of good luck and a bit of good judgment, I ended up, um, it was a stable family, and then as a result of that, I ended up getting a, a, whatever the collective noun for academic qualifications are in the UK, a clutch of GCSEs, A-levels, and went on to university in Manchester. Um, and that set a path where, um, for the last 15, 20 years or so, I've done a number of commercially interesting roles uh, for um, management consultancies, for technology businesses, um, and private equity-backed businesses in the UK. So, um, interesting. Um, I get to my mid-30s, sadly now past my mid-30s, um, and start to realise that the, the North Star for much of that work had been, um, had been profit, had been um, how do I make the business that I work for or our clients more, more money. And as I got to the kind of my mid-30s and realised that I'm probably going to be doing this, like most people are in here for another 30-odd years, um, it, it was lacking something. So a lot of that work, whilst interesting, was not, didn't have a, an extra level of kind of social impact or purpose. So I was quite keen to, uh, to join an industry or join a business that um, had, had that and being very candid without um, having to then let go of what was... Um, opportunity that I'd, I'd now got through, you know, getting paid well in the commercial sector. So I kind of wanted my cake and I wanted to, to eat it. So um, I did join a learning business. So I joined Avado. Uh, I joined in uh, about 15 minutes before the pandemic uh, started about uh, a couple of years ago, which was, was quite interesting. And um, so for those of you that don't know us, we build um, uh, skills programs for uh, individuals, be them as individuals or as part of a, a wider uh, organisation um, with a view to um, helping them to access careers and accelerate their careers, particularly in vogue at the moment. But it's a privately owned business, so it's owned by, won't surprise you to know, Blenheim Chalcott, it's probably the reason why I'm standing on this stage or we're standing on this stage. And, and with that, it has all the trappings that you would expect of a privately owned business. So um, a focus on cash, a focus on profitability, a focus on growth, a focus on um, shareholder value. But rather than that be the, the North Star, which it had been for much of the other um, things that I'd done beforehand, um, we, we're a learning business. And so we take the view as a team, uh, me and the rest of the management team, that if we continue to deliver high quality learning experiences, clients will want to, that are genuinely building skills that uh, young people or people of all ages need, then clients will come and pay for them and they'll continue to pay for them and they'll kind of pay us on time and they'll pay us well. And it, it almost fulfills that kind of secondary responsibility of being a, a primary, um, a, a privately backed business. And so the best example I can give you of that is, is Fast Futures, which um, Emmanuel um, was, has been part of the learners. So this is a programme that we launched in, uh, in, in response to the pandemic. So um, we wanted to uh, make sure that young people who were most likely to be affected by the pandemic, and certainly those people from underrepresented backgrounds across the UK and here in West London, got the opportunity to build some relevant skills and then to use those skills to um, access careers and accelerate their careers. Uh, moved to Kent at the age of like 12. And in Kent, I grew up in a, as Matt said, they're similar to a lower, low, lower economically social background. Yeah, yeah that's the, something like that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so in Kent, uh, in school, my studies were, I picked subjects that were based around business and finance related uh, subjects. So um, when I went to uni, I chose to continue that path. But um, before I went to uni, I had a bit of a setback where I had to do a foundation year because I didn't quite get the A-levels that I wanted. But um, starting in year zero and then actually starting in first year, that setback after that major comeback, I ended up getting a first in my degree quite proud of that. And then, um, <laughs> I was that. thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, as um, Richard said, uh, during the pandemic, it was hard finding a job. So I uh, had applied for like over a hundred different jobs. I'm sure there's people in here that can relate to that as well. During 2020, it was hard finding a job. And um, I came across the Fast Futures program and uh, 
The Fast Futures program definitely helped me out with my employability skills, helped me with CV building, CV reviews. I had help from my mentor, Taylor, who was a great deal of help in finding my uh, job and preparing me for the interview. I had help from the former managing director, Matthew. He's the main reason I have the job that I have now, so thank you to him. But um, yeah, I'd say uh, Fast Futures has definitely helped me with my employability skills and better prepared me for the workforce. I definitely got some insightful views from other students on the course and my mentor. But um, yeah, yeah, it's possible. Awesome. <laughs>